Hello and welcome to The Spectrum Show, the show dedicated to the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Hello and welcome to the last in the series. I hope to be able to continue with more episodes after a short break, and I'm still looking for people who have Spectrum related hardware who is willing to take pictures or video to let me use in features. Anyway, on with the show. Coming up in this Automata special, we take a look back to December 1983 to see the latest Sinclair news and get the Christmas Top 10. We look back at the Pyman's life in video games and beyond. And we take a look at some Automata games. But first, it's into the time machine and back to December 1983. Bugbyte, the Liverpool-based software company, will lose the right to sell one of its most popular games, Manic Miner. A split in the company sees Alan Matten leaving to set up software projects, taking with him the author of the classic platform game Matthew Smith. Bugbyte had to stop manufacturing the game on November the 28th, when their license ended, allowing software projects to take up the reins. Already selling 40,000 copies, this move will impact Bugbyte's Christmas sales, but they say they have enough stock to last over the period. Adventure International has concluded a deal with Marvel Comics, which allows them to produce adventure games based on their famous superheroes. Coming first, hopefully in May 1984, will be Spider-Man. This will be released for several home micros, including the ZX Spectrum. The coding for the Spectrum version will be handled by Brian Howarth, who has already produced conversions of many Adventure International titles. Automata UK are locked in a legal battle over the company's new release for the Spectrum. The game, Auto Monopoly, is a version of the famous board game produced by Waddington's, who seem very unhappy about this unofficial release. Automata are appealing for funds from their fans to help fight the case, which started way back in June. Waddington's are now trying to get an injunction to stop the game's sales. Automata have already agreed to change the name from Auto Monopoly to Go to Jail, but Waddington's seem to want to take things further. Sinclair announced that the 1 millionth Spectrum rolled off the production line in Dundee on the 9th of December. It's expected that the Spectrum will overtake its little brother, the ZX81, already selling 1.1 million in February. At present, Sinclair rolling out an impressive 5,000 units a month. And that's the news from December 1983. And now, instead of our usual top selling games, it's time for the 1983 Christmas Top 10. At number 10, the scrolly maze fest that is Incentive Software's Splat. Down to number 9 is Ocean's Arcade Conversion, Kong. New in at number 8, on cue with Pool from CDS. At number 7, it's the first of two titles from Ultimate Play the Game, Luna Jetman. At number 6, Anchester awaits in Quicksilver's 3D Antitype. At number 5, it's the game from two companies, Manic Miner. Up to number 4, take to the air with Scion's Flight Simulation. Burning Rubber at number 3, it's Checkered Flag, again from Scion. Not quite making it, at number 2, is the Pyramid from Fantasy Software. And this year's Christmas number one is Back to the Haunted House. Yes, it's Attic Attack from Ultimate Play the Game. The Paimon was one of the very early computer video game characters that became a cult due to the huge popularity not only of the games but also of the company and how they connected with the public. The company, Automata UK, consisted of Mel Croucher and Christian Penfold. Their first game, Pi Mania, was released in 1982 for both the Spectrum and ZX81, with other versions soon to follow. The game was a graphic adventure that offered a £6,000 gold and diamond sundial for the person who could solve the clues hidden within the game and meet the company at a certain place and time. There was a lot of controversy, mainly ignited by magazines like Computer and Video Games, who more or less accused Automata of never intending to give out the prize. 
this is because it went unclaimed for two years. Shortly after, the prize was actually won, and computer and video games, along with many other people, had to eat humble pie. The winners, Sue Cooper and Liz Newman, collected the sundial and the mystery was put to rest. The Pie Man as a character went on and appeared in numerous other games. His next game was Groucho, or, to give it its full title, My Name is Uncle Groucho, You Win a Fat Cigar. The game was similar in format to Pie Mania, and this time the player had to find the name of a Hollywood celebrity from all the clues within the game. The game was finally won by Phil Daly after correctly identifying Mickey Mouse and winning a trip to Hollywood on Concord and a return journey on the QE2. It was early in the company's history that Mel Croucher decided to use the B-side of the cassettes to enhance the playing experience by including audio tracks. These tracks were bad, but in a funny sort of crazy kooky kind of way that reflected the company's attitude to the computer market. Hello children. Hello. Eins, zwei, eins, zwei, drei. Mm. These for the adverts that tell you all lies. Yeah. These for the little bugs, not to mention flies. Yeah. C is for the curses when the programs crash. Yeah. D is for the dustman what carts away the trash. They took over the back page of Popular Computing Weekly for nearly three years, producing some funny, clever, satirical, and often downright crazy marketing cartoons featuring the Pie Man and a host of other characters from their games. This was something that I looked forward to every week. Because Automata frequently published games sent to them by young hopefuls, things began to slow down when the influx of games started to drop. All of this was played out in the cartoon and eventually leading to the Pyman going on strike in August 1983, saying he wasn't going to do any more cartoons until he received some programs from the public. It didn't help that they got threatened with legal action when they released their Monopoly game Auto Monopoly, Waddington's applied pressure and eventually got them to change their name to go to jail. As 1984 arrived, Automata looked to be back on track, releasing game after game, many featuring the Pie Man. With so many games released, each having its own song, it wasn't long before Automata released an audio tape containing all of the songs. This was quickly followed by a second. In 2010, all of the audio tracks were gathered together and released as a special limited edition LP, still available from the link on screen. As the computer market grew, it seemed that Automata were floundering, putting all of their efforts into one very special game, Deus Ex Machina. This was no ordinary game though, it was more of an experience. The game included fully synchronised audio track with the vocal talents of Frankie Howard, John Pertwee and Ian Jury that played along as you progressed through the game. What you got? I'm a fertilizing agent. My brothers are all wiggly. I'm a fertilizer. Sadly, I think the game never got the recognition it truly deserved. In 1985, Automata continued to release games, but things were beginning to look bad. Sales were dropping off, and the refusal to use third party distributors didn't help. They preferred instead to do everything themselves. Automata as a company ended when Penfold and Croucher split around June 1985 and the rights were taken over by Interceptor Micros in 1986. And the Pie Man? Well, the very last cartoon on the back of Popular Computing Weekly on April 28, 1985 said it all. He's probably in a retirement home somewhere for old computer characters where he spends most of his time playing the saxophone, eating worms and annoying the other residents. All in the name of fun though. The industry misses characters in companies like this. Instead, everything's about churning out the next third-person shooter that looks just like the dozens of others that get released and making as much money as possible. Come back the pie, man, that's what I say. Well, in fact, that might actually come true. A reboot version of Deus Ex Machina, with Mel Croucher involved, and the Vulcan talents of Christopher Lee is currently in production. Check out the link. And who knows, we may even get the pie man to make an appearance. As this is an Automata special, we're going to take a look at two Automata games. First is Pioneer, released in 1984. The game is pretty much the standard collect em up style affair that has hints of Boulder Dash and Doctor Do about it. The graphics are large and unusually for Automata, smooth and well animated. 
especially the main character, Bert. The idea is to collect all the items on screen whilst avoiding all the chasing enemies. The enemies can be killed in typical Boulder Dash style by undermining the edit key and letting it fall on them. This, however, proves quite tricky, as it seems even if you are next to an enemy, for a split second they immediately kill you. This can be very frustrating and it proves to be the downfall of the game in general. The first few levels are moderately easy and then things start to get tough, up to a point where frustration creeps in and you just want to stop playing. The later levels include additional obstacles like spikes. These stop you moving in certain directions but can also kill you if you collide with them. The enemy vary in intelligence with some moving around randomly and some heading straight towards you. This is typical of this kind of game but the screen layer and large graphics, although making it look attractive, make the game far too difficult. Sound is well used with some nice sound effects and the tinkly little tune at the start. An interesting feature is that when you lose your last life, which you do quite a lot, the game starts again at the same level at which you'd reached. This can be reset from the main menu, but it does give you some incentive to keep trying. The game could have been so much better had the difficulty curve been just a little bit less vertical. The best way to play this game is by using pokes to make you invincible. However, this only works for the chasing enemies and not the spikes and even the falling edit keys. All in all then, a pretty frustrating effort. Next we have Piebald, also released in 1984. Everyone should know which arcade game this is a clone of, and there are plenty of other versions to choose from on the spectrum. The idea of the game, for those not familiar with Qbert, is to bounce around changing the colours of the tiles and avoiding the nasties. Once all the tiles are complete, that's the end of the level and you move on to the next one. Gameplay wise it's not too bad, but the main letdown is the movement of the characters. Instead of bouncing in from block to block, they just appear there. This aside though, the game isn't too bad, and worth a good few plays at least. The graphics are nice, although the angle of the pyramid is more acute than the arcade game. Another difference are the speed of the lifts on either side. These seem to move at an alarmingly slow rate, and once you're at the top you have to jump off yourself. Sound is used sparingly, only played when you appear or die. So what we have here then is a mediocre game for 1984 and an above average game for Automata. If you like Qbert, there are better versions out there, but why not give this a try? It won't convert you from the other superior clones, but it will give you 10 minutes of fun. That's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to help make in the next one, get in touch via the details below. See you soon.